This morning, CNN has learned several Ukrainians have in fact survived after a theater they were sheltering in was slammed by heavy shelling. You can see what's left of it there. Uh, right now, the head of the Chernobyl region, which is uh, to the northeast of Kyiv, says that city is, quote, suffering great losses. Joining us now is someone who is seeing those losses firsthand. She is Tata Maharyan. She's a member of the Ukrainian Volunteer Medical Battalion in the capital, Kyiv. Tata, it's good to have you back. Uh, when we spoke while I was in Ukraine, you described just horrific scenes. You, you, you described seeing dead children, the victims of this war. I wonder what you've seen in the last week and a half or so. Have things gotten worse? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, uh, it's not less heartbreaking to see adults die as well. <laughs> um, a lot more children, if I may say so. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we actually um, we were looking for a kid who lost uh, her limb because um, she was shocked. Uh, we administered first aid and then she got lost. And then we were looking for her. Um, that was a pretty horrible experience, I would say. Um, and then a lot of people with... Um, uh, brain damages um, because as a result of um, aviation shelling of the cities and so many 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 people are wounded many people are dying and um, yeah I'm not sure if I can say this I'm pretty happy that we're not the only one who's suffering the Russians are suffering as well um, both physically and economically this is something that is the right thing to do. So the, the war is on our territory, but the Russians are feeling it as well. And so this is this is what keeps me keeps me going, probably helping helping my country, knowing that something is being. There's been such a focus on the strength of the Ukrainian people uh, that we have seen. The scene that you describe, though, and what you are witnessing on a daily basis in terms of these physical injuries. That has an intense emotional toll as well. You talk about the shock in that little girl you were trying to help. How do you think people are holding up? How are you holding up when you are facing this day in, day out, with no clear end in sight? Um, it's really devastating when the Russians kill civilians and they kill pretty much, well, they spare nobody. Journalists, medical service members, and um, kids, adult people, like the elderly people. Everyone, and it's it's you have the feeling that you have nowhere to hide, probably, <laughs> and uh, you have nowhere to run, especially when the drones are right above your head, uh, and you always question where, whether this is the drone of our army or if this is a hostile drone, and if it is, where to hide, and so uh, sometimes you don't really have the time to think about it. You just um, you just go with with what you have to do. And then the times that I, that I get to think about what is going on is right before sleep. And uh, I try not to <laughs> because I, I, I notice that I get demoralized day after day. I try to stay strong. I see all the messages, all, all the support that my friends from abroad um, express. And I'm very, very thankful. But um, I really can go I don't know how longer I can go with news of my friends and my close ones being captured in, by Russians, being wounded and dying. And it is very, very, very devastating. And I also, I can't even imagine the amount of money I have to spend on therapy once this all ends. I'm sorry for laughing. This is a silly, silly thought that I have. Listen, any way to get through, I, I want to give you a chance here to speak to to, to Russians, right, to, to, to people at home, not to Putin, but to Russians who might not know what the reality is in Ukraine today as the army invades and the Air Force drops bombs. Uh, what would you say to them? Um, this, this is a very good question. Um, I try not to have hatred in my heart towards all the people in the, in the world, and especially in Russia, because I do realize that there are some people who are trying to be aware of the situation or um, 
those who are not aware, I do have very, very little tolerance towards them because it's unforgivable to not be aware of what is going on in Ukraine right now. Um, to be ignorant is one of the biggest crimes I think uh, there are. Um, so what I would say, just Google what is going on, look at the pictures. There's not much you can do, of course, being a Russian citizen because, well, of the regime that you have. But you can strike, you can go on demonstrations, you can express your solidar solidarity with Ukraine. And me coming from a law society, um, being a mooter for quite a, quite a long time, I see that um, mood courts tend to disqualify Russian teams. And most importantly, Russian teams tend to step down themselves to show solidarity with Ukrainian people. These are the actions that do bring um, the Russians closer to the reality. And I am thankful to those who express their position. Yeah. Um, I respect those who are silent. And this is basically all I have to say. Tata, we Tata. will do our part, which is to continue to bring your story and the story of other Ukrainian people to the world. Uh, I just will say, I'm sure people watching now, because I am, are in awe, awe of the strength and the service you're showing in the midst of all this. Thank you. This does help a lot to know that you're not alone. We won't. Tata -ta Maharyan, thank you. Be safe. Thank you. It's happening all over the country there now. So many people facing up to this. The costs are enormous.